Remember how we said tonight wouldn't be Scott Wedgwood's revenge game in net? Well, tonight the Nashville Predators kick off their regular season against the Dallas Stars, and there is some question about who will be in net. We'll explain and preview tonight's game today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators Podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators Podcast. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to kick off this first day of the regular season, y'all, with a welcome to any first-time listeners. And of course, a shout out to our everydayers and to our Lockdown Predators insiders. We appreciate your support and we love talking Nashville Predators hockey with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer with Penalty Box Radio and my friends, I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Emma Lingen, and I'm the Nashville Predators site editor and reporter for the Hockey News. Well, Emma, it's been 101 days since July 1st. It feels a little bit like the Titanic. It's been it's been 84 years, years. <laughs> <laughs> Since Barry Trotz went out and signed some big names to this roster tonight, we are going to see this new look Nashville Predators team on the ice for the first game of the regular season against the Dallas Stars. But there may be one exception when it comes to the roster. We're going to tell you about that and talk ourselves down through that in today's episode. Before we dive into all of the opening night talk, do want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Well, Emma, we thought that we were going to uh, just be kind of previewing the game. We're going to be talking about keys to this game. We're going to be talking about Nashville versus Dallas. And then all of the sudden yesterday, a hitch in the giddy up of, of exponential proportion, something that I don't know that we necessarily saw coming. And in case you hadn't seen the news UC Soros listed as day to day with a lower body injury. And as of now, may or may not be starting in the Nashville Predators season opener against the Dallas Stars. This is something that, you know, maybe those of us more suspicious and astute could have snuffed out uh, on Tuesday. Chris Mason suited up to practice with the team, which I thought was fantastic. They called that a maintenance day for UC Soros. Yesterday in practice, Soros was out on the ice in full pads. You know, he was kind of working with Ben Vanderklok on some things. But then we saw Matt Murray and the Preds announced, hey, we've recalled Matt Murray. Well, now the plot thickens, y'all. And uh, at the end of practice, we were told officially that he is day-to-day lower body injury. Emma, what are your thoughts on this situation? (laughs) Well, my first thought, To all the listeners, don't panic because I would say that really the fact that he was out there at all on Wednesday, even if he wasn't a full participant in practice, the fact that he was out there at all, that he was a limited participant and that he was made available to the media afterwards would seem to indicate that the injury is not that serious. Now, this is all relative. I'm not saying, you know, what that means for his status for opening night, but I am saying that this does not look like something that is going to keep him out of the lineup long term. Now, obviously, haven't even played a game yet. It's very early. So let's not, you know, risk further injuring our you know, long-term investment in net, I'm sure is what the Predators are thinking. And, you know, it it sounded like it was something that happened during the first period of the last preseason game against Carolina, which now explains why Saros was replaced by Scott Wedgwood for the final two periods of that game. Um, You know, at, at this point, really at any point, but especially at this point in the year, 
like before it's even started, literally, you want to be, you'd rather be safe than sorry. Like this is not worth aggravating anything, no matter how minor it might be, because I know you see, and I know that if he really wanted to, if he really could be out there, he would be. And he just wants to play. He always just wants to play. But, you know, long-term health and safety comes first. And I do think you have to look at this long-term. Does it stink that it may be the first game of the season? Yes, it does. But I think that there is a good side to this that you pointed out. And, you know, definitely something we need to talk through. The good side, like you said, he was in full pads. He participated in practice. He did some different things with Ben Vanderklok. He was skating around the rink. This is not something where, you know, he appeared to be in any pain or any distress. He was just taking it easy. But he did do, you know, some work. So it's not like any problem. And again, like you said, he was made available to the media. So that tells you, you know, that it's it's not a traumatic injury. And Soros really downplayed it as well, you know, just saying, look, it was something that I tweaked in this first period of the Carolina game. He did say it feels, you know, it felt better yesterday. It felt better the day before that. Like every day it's getting a little bit better. It's not, you know, any huge thing. But like you mentioned, do you risk in game one of an 82 game season, do you risk stirring up an injury or re-injuring or making something worse with your starting goaltender? And that's sort of the question that the goaltending staff and Andrew Brunette have to talk through. After practice yesterday, Andrew Brunette, again, non-committal as far as for sure who would be in net for the Nashville Predators. This is what he had to say about who the starter would be. And he also answered a question about backup Scott Wedgwood. Uh, yeah, I guess we're day-to-day, no idea yet. So don't know what's going to happen. What, what have you seen from Wedgwood to this point throughout camp as he gets kind of adjusted to the new, new system, new team? Yeah, I think, you know, he's put in a tough spot in Florida. Obviously, he didn't have a lot of players and they were they had some of their guys and so we didn't really help them out there and then I thought he's been pretty good I mean I think coming in the other night cold is, is never fun I thought he made some really good saves though and I feel he's getting a little bit more comfortable every day I talked to him quite a bit today and his game's starting to get better every day so we have talked about it There has been concern about the preseason performance of Scott Wedgwood. We would refer you to a previous episode this week where Emma staged what I thought was really a lovely intervention. But let's just revisit that talk, Emma. How concerning is it for you if UC Soros does not go tomorrow? And what does that mean from Scott Wedgwood? And how do you see this affecting the team? Well, again, I I would say you have to look at this long term. Is mm-hmm. it a blow, you know, a tough blow for this particular game, this particular week against this particular opponent? Of course it is. I'm not going to downplay that or say that, you know, oh, guys, we'd rather have Scott Wedgwood. In it. Like, no, I think it's, um, you know, it's, of course, there's there's no way to spin that. It's It's not good. But not ideal, not ideal. It's not ideal. But this is why you go out in free agency and you get a good goaltender, a good backup goaltender like Scott Wedgwood. Now, I have seen so much still, this irks me. So many people hitting the panic button about Scott Wedgwood in the preseason, to which I will say once again, people. If your backup goalie is your biggest concern, then that's pretty good. I think you have to remember this is a very different team in front of the goalie now. There's the potential for a much higher, you know, much higher production out of the offense on this team, which could not be said last year when they faced the Dallas Stars. And I just think that, you know, it's it's hard because of course you want your starter to be your starter, but I think that one game or even two games of Scott Wedgwood really is, I will gladly take that over a long-term injured UC Soros. Yes. And I think the other thing that you have to remember is that going into this game tonight against the Dallas stars, there are more things to polish up than goaltending 
you know, this is a Nashville Predators team that is still working on chemistry and timing and understanding and implementing Andrew Burnett's system, especially with some of those new players. So it is not like this Nashville Predators team was a sure thing. And then all of a sudden, Scott Wedgwood might be in net. And now it's, you know, gone to hell in a handbasket. You know, so this is going to be a game, a growth game. It's going to be kind of a measuring stick game. I think you and I have been very clear saying it's going to take this Nashville Predators team a little bit of time to play some regular season games to really find their stride. And so I don't think that if Scott Wedgwood is in net, that is the giant hitch in the giddy up that costs the Predators the game. You know, Andrew Brunette said, you know, I feel like, you know, he's, he's been in some tough situations, you know, in Florida, he played against Stanley cup champion players with a team in front of him, very much Milwaukee admirals, you know? So again, don't read too much into that. Those preseason stats did get a chance to talk with Scott Wedgwood after practice. And this is what you won't see on the stat sheet. And that is that Scott Wedgwood is so cool. So thoroughly enjoyed talking with him. Not going to lie. I know that we needed to talk about goaltending, but I really wanted to talk about his new mask, which is incredible. It is um, Wolverine, but it's matte, which I know seems weird, but it's just so had a great conversation, but just talked about the transition and, and he made some really great points. He said, you know, I'm playing behind a different looking defense than I've seen before. This is a different defensive uh, plan than I've played behind. And I've played two and a half years behind the same defense, behind mostly the same defenders. So there is an adjustment to it. And he also pointed out, and I thought this was really a great perspective when it comes to weighing preseason and, and regular season. He said, it's, sometimes it's almost easier to come to a team at the trade deadline because you were just thrown in. And you learn at game speed. And I think especially for goaltenders, you almost have to just be at game speed. You know, you had said this on another podcast. You don't really mimic for a goaltender gameplay. You, you can't necessarily practice it. You can't mimic it. And so I think him in a regular season game might look a little bit different if that is what has to happen. And here's what's real. Scott Wedgwood ready to prove himself. I don't think we anticipated this could turn into the Wedgwood revenge game, but you know, that may be what happens on the ice tonight. Of course, we're going to keep you posted on that. Um, yeah, just, just an interesting turn of an interesting turn of events yesterday for the Nashville predators on, you know, opening day. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of a unexpected, um, you know, bit there. But I think that it's, you know, while the initial shock was kind of like, oh, no, you kind of actually settle back in. You think about it. It's like, OK, let's look at the facts here. I feel like, you know, it feels like I'm in therapy right now. It's like, OK, Emma, <laughs> let's think. How do we feel about this? <laughs> let's look at all the facts of the situation, which is that he was at practice in full pads. He was on the ice. He was made available to the media. Mm -hmm. He was downplaying it himself. It like all of this would seem to indicate that this is not going to be a long-term thing. And to me, right. this only reaches potential disaster level if it is a long-term thing. Yes. So the news, big picture, very encouraging. We'll see what it means for the Nashville Predators in net tonight in their opening game. Yes, goaltending will be a big story in this game tonight, but there is plenty more to talk about before the puck drops. Coming up, we're going to tell you what we'll be watching for as the Predators host the Stars. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This is the most wonderful time of the year for sports fans. You've got Major League Baseball playoffs in full swing. The NFL is well underway, and we've got the NHL kicking off here in Nashville tonight. The best place to celebrate all of that sports action is with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. NFL fans, you can kick off your season with a big return at FanDuel. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's a guaranteed $200 in bonus bets with your first 
$5 bet. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. So check out all the sports details and all the sports action at FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. On tomorrow's show, Emma, it is going to be our first game recap, which is going to be so exciting. Of course, we will share our one word to describe the game as we always do. And friends, just setting expectations. It doesn't have to be one word. We make our rules. We break our rules. Plus, we're going to look ahead Saturday night. They have a road game in Detroit as well. So the season kicking off right away. Emma, when we look at the game tonight against the Dallas Stars, what are you really watching for from this Predators team in their first game? Honestly, I'm looking for chemistry. I'm looking Mm -hmm. for chemistry with these new guys, especially obviously on you know, on special teams and at five on five, uh, like these new line combinations, I'm looking to see, you know, now do I expect their chemistry to be in mid season form on night one? No, but you want to at least see that there's potential there and you don't want it to look completely disjointed. Um, so that's like maybe kind of a broad, a broad thing, but that, that is what I'm looking for from this team is just, you know, are they like truly are they as good on the ice as they are on paper? Right. I love there was a Supreme Court justice who was talking about uh, I think he was talking about pornography and he said, I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I see it. And I think that's so true of this chemistry that you're talking about. It's very hard to make a checklist and say, here is how we know that Stephen Stamkos and Jonathan Marcheseau and Tommy Novak have great chemistry. You just know it when you see it and you know it as you see them play at game speed, you know, against an opponent like Dallas. So I agree with you. I think you have to look for that. I'm watching that top line. When you talk about chemistry, they had it last season. We've seen them look very good in the preseason. And I love Andrew Burnett said something yesterday after practice that I thought was great. He was asked does that potential offensive weapon that you have now as a second line take the pressure off of your top line? And Andrew Burnett said, oh, I don't think they want the pressure taken off. They want to be one of the best lines in the NHL again. And you are looking at a trio with Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist that was so important for the Predators and so good compared to other lines in the NHL. So for me, I want to see that top line not getting into the game and taking anything for granted. I want them fighting for goals like we saw them do last season. And yes, I think we're going to get more depth scoring. I think it's a great looking top six, but I want to see that hunger from that top line as well. The other line I think that is so important that may get overlooked. How do you see this identity line doing? Because again, Sands, Kiefer Sherwood. So we know there's probably going to be less smack talk on the ice. Maybe not none. (laughs) We hear you, Cole Smith and Michael McCarron. (laughs) But maybe less without Kiefer Sherwood. What do you need to see from them, Emma, to to feel like that line is still going to be able to do the job that they did last season? Honestly, I have been very impressed, not surprised, but impressed by Michael McCarron and Cole Smith during the preseason. Um, Those guys are still running at full speed. You know, Andrew Burnett, we asked him about it after the preseason game against Carolina. We're like, man, Cole Smith is forechecking like it's game seven of the Stanley Cup playoff. And uh, he, he said, yeah, his motor just never stops. And that's what that's what you need from all the guys on that line. So I'm really not worried about Cole Smith. I'm not worried about Michael McCarron. I wouldn't say I'm worried about Mark Jankowski or Yuso Parson, but it looks like it's going to be Mark Jankowski. I wouldn't say I'm worried about him, but I am interested to see. I will be kind of, you know, leaning forward in my seat a little bit to watch how he fits in with this line because I think, you know, objectively his playing style fits uh Mm -hmm. but you want to see like can he can he bring that motor that you know that kind of like you said the energy maybe not necessarily smack talking but you know if he can bring that same kind of you know 
get under the skin energy that Kiefer Sherwood brought, I think that that is going to really go a long way towards making this team, you know, what they want to be, which is difficult to play against. Yes. I think we are going to hear less comments on the ice about someone's mama, but I think we are still going to see a lot of physicality and a lot of pressure from that identity line. And it's going to be so important for Nashville the other thing that I think everybody is going to be watching, and I mean not just Nashville Predators fans who have seen some preseason action, but I'm talking nationally, people are going to be watching this Predators power play. And it's it's been a little rough in the preseason. It's been a little bit rough. And I think it's going to be tricky because, A, Dallas last season, the least penalized team in the league. So are they going to end up, you know, looking for snacks in the sin bin and giving this power play a chance? We'll have to see, but they're still trying to kind of find that chemistry and that timing. Is it going to look okay tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I think, so fair. Yeah. um, I think that, you know, is it going to look okay tonight? And is it going to be okay in the end? Two very different questions. I think True. that we do need to remember, and I feel like a broken record here, but I feel like we've said that, you know, this team, this Predators team last year took over half a season to kind of get it together with the both the power play and at full strength, you know, just kind of getting... Andrew Brunette's system completely, you know, under their belts and like really feeling comfortable with it. And I think that we should expect the same from all of the new players and, and to an extent, the entire team, you know, if everyone's playing with different line mates, different combinations uh, on the power play, the penalty kill, whatever, I think we're going to see an adjustment period. Um, I cannot speak to how long that period is going to be, but I will say I no, I don't expect to have for them to have it all figured out in game one. I just don't. And especially against Dallas, like I said, they don't commit many penalties. And when they do, they were eighth in the league last season, killing those penalties off. So this is a tough challenge right out of the gate when you have a penalty kill that is still trying to kind of find its stride. But let's see what Nashville can do if they get the man advantage, because down the road, that's going to be an important component for the Predators if they want to be competitive. Let's see how they are right out of the gate. And maybe game, you know, 50 will look back and say, oh, gosh, that was terrible. Thank goodness we're where we are now. We're just going to we're just going to manifest that if it's not great. Yeah. Coming up, we're going to tell you some keys to the game and we're going to tell you which Predators players could have the biggest impact on the outcome tonight. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. If you are looking forward to seeing this Nashville Predators team play this season, you've got to check out the deals at Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to get tickets for your favorite sports, music, theater, and comedy. Game Time now has this new feature. It's called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff and shows you only incredible deals on great seats so you're not wasting time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time has great deals right now on tickets for the Nashville Predators, Nashville SC, and the Tennessee Titans. Game Time also has a low price guarantee and the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Emma, it is happening. Finally, it's been 84 years, but the Nashville Predators kicking off a really exciting regular season tonight at Bridgestone Arena. Puck drop at 7 p.m. against oh, the Dallas Stars, y'all. So when we look at this game, Emma, the one thing that I think has to be really good for Nashville to be competitive is the defense. And we talked about the loss of Ryan McDonough, and I love that you have made the bold statement that Brady Shea 
is perhaps even an upgrade. I think seeing what he has done in practices and in the preseason, you have to feel great about that addition to the blue line. Dallas is a very good offensive team. They were third in goals scored last season behind Colorado and Toronto. They had eight 20 plus goal scorers last season. Only one of them, Joe Pavelski, has departed. They've got some young players coming in that have offensive upside. So for me, I'm really watching the defense and watching the combinations because, you know, generally we've seen Yossi and Shea together. Yesterday at practice, we saw Yossi Fabro and Shen and Shea. And of course, we had the French connection, Carrier and Jeremy Lazan together as well. So defense to me is going to be really big. Yeah, definitely. Especially, I think, if you're kind of going point by point here on what on the differences between the two teams. Dallas did, they didn't lose a lot, but the pieces that they did lose from last season were primarily like the impact players were on defense. You know, they lost Chris Tanev, they lost Yanni Hockenpah, they lost Ryan Suter. I mean, those, their, their defense is, you know, on paper weaker than it was last year. And so I think that if we're looking for areas where Nashville could very well have the edge, defense, is definitely one of them. But again, like you said, they need to deliver and and they need to, to actually play well. Yeah. When you look at the game tonight, what else does Nashville have to do very well to be competitive and get a win? I think they, you know, they, they I mean, this is going to sound like coach speak, but they need to play a full 60. They need to play the full 60 minutes. And that's where that motor comes in that we were talking about with Cole Smith, Michael McCarron, those kind of guys. You need every guy to be playing like that. Finish every chance, go after every rebound, go after, you know, hunt every single puck, finish every check. Like those are the, it's the little things, but they add up. And I think especially against a team like Dallas, that's really deep offensively that, you know, those little things are going to go a long way. Yeah. Along the lines of those little things, one of the criticisms maybe that Andrew Burnett had from that Carolina loss, that last preseason Carolina loss is that the Predators lost some of those 50, 50 battles. And we heard it from Cole Smith. We heard it from Tommy Novak. You have to win those 50, 50 battles. And that's such a small part of the game in, in just seconds of a game. But those are the little things I think that really make a difference, especially for the Predators trying to play the way Andrew Burnett wants them to play. So I think this game is going to be won or lost maybe in those little moments in the 60 minutes. They have to be consistently good at that. When you're looking at players, Emma, I know it's very easy to say Steven Stamkos and Jonathan Marcheseau, and that that's a valid answer. But when you're looking strictly at players that you are watching closely tonight, who stands out to you? Well, I already mentioned Mark Jankowski. He, that might seem like a, a weird one, but I'm I'm going with that for the reasons I said earlier. I'm also going to be watching Tommy Novak. And yeah. I'm going to be watching Phil Tomasino, too. I think that those are both guys that you know, for different reasons and different circumstances, I think at the end of last year, it kind of left us wanting more uh, and left the coaching staff wanting more and, you know, believe that they can bring more and they do have more. And so again, am I going to judge their entire season based on one game? No, of course not. But those are guys who, you know, Novak had a really good start to camp. He kind of, you know, plateaued a little bit. He hasn't looked bad, but he's been, you know, a little invisible. Um, and then Tomasino has, he was one of my biggest surprises in camp. Yes. Like he was, he had a very, very strong camp and very strong preseason. So I'll be looking to see if he can carry that over into the games that actually count. I love that you're talking about Phil Tomasino because I don't know if you would have told me at the beginning of training camp that Phil Tomasino would be a player for me to watch in the first game of the regular season. I'm not sure that I would have believed that, but I 100% agree with you. Phil Tomasino has been such a surprise and a delight 
this preseason in practices, uh, just with his commitment, his pace, I think just even his mindset, he just seems lighter. It seems a little bit like he feels more confident. He feels more comfortable. And so for me, it's it's that line with Tomasino, Sissons, and Evangelista. And I talked with Luke Evangelista yesterday, and he was sort of saying, you know, I come into this season with different expectations because, you know, if you remember, he really raised his game at the end of the year. And he said, you know, the coaching staff and I, have different expectations for how I'm going to start this season and play. And so I think that line could be a sneaky, fun line to watch, especially because Tomasino has been fantastic. And Luke Evangelista, if he can pick up where he left off, uh, you, you stick them on either side of Mr. Potato Head and really good things can happen. So I think that there are a lot of players to watch. What do you expect from Bridgestone Arena? with Steven Stamkos finally making his debut in gold. Oh, they're, they're ready for it. You they're know what? Like, like you said, it's been 84 years that we've been <laughs> waiting for this. I think the, you know, we've been talking about it for that long. The fans have been waiting for it. Um, and, and it's exciting for them. It's an exciting time to be a Predators fan. I think just because like I've said, I've said this before that it's not just about, okay, yes, the players that they went and got in free agency, but it's about the message that it sends. Hey, we're trying to win and we're trying to win now. And that is something that this fan base really hasn't had in recent years. And so it's exciting. I think that they should enjoy it. Fans should enjoy it. Not put, you know, don't rest all your hopes and dreams on the season opener. (laughs) <laughs> or right. any Let's one game for that matter. Our play doesn't score right away. Yeah. Let's not boo. <laughs> Or let's not, you know, call the season a a throwaway if, you know, they lose game one against Dallas. Like it's it's one game out of 82. There's so many of these. And I mean, I I think just I would say to the fans, you know, come be loud and enjoy because, you know, a lot of teams say a lot of players for other teams say that Bridgestone is not a fun place to play as an opponent. And it's because of the fans. Yes. Yeah. And I heard that from Luke Evangelista. He said, you know, looking forward to playing these meaningful games, but looking forward to playing in front of the fans. These guys love playing at home at Bridgestone Arena. And I will tell you, when I just think about Steven Stamkos skating out of those fangs for the opening in gold officially as the Nashville Predator in a regular season game, that is goosebump worthy. It's just going to be great. So again, Nashville Predators opening game tonight, 7 p.m. Bridgestone Arena against, yeah, yeah, the Dallas Stars. We're going to be keeping our eye on the goaltending situation. Be sure that you're following the podcast on social media, LO underscore Predators. We're going to tweet out any news, you know, as we hear it. And again, want to invite people, if you are interested in talking about Predators hockey beyond the podcast, we want to invite you to join our Locked on Predators Insiders community. It's been so much fun for Emma and I this offseason to chat with our insiders. We just kind of send questions and we bounce ideas back and forth and and share breaking news. And with the season kicking off, it might be a great time to join. If you are interested, you can get information in the link of this video. And there's also a link in our show bio as well. So check that out. Before we sign off, Emma, before we get ready for puck drop tonight, let everyone know where they can find you and your work. You can find me on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Emma underscore Lingen. You can find my coverage of the Predators at the Hockey News. You can also find my latest venture. Uh, I am the new host this season of the Hockey News Wraparound Show, which is uh, twice a week podcast that covers all the latest news around the NHL. So if you're curious about what else is going on in hockey outside of Nashville, be sure to check that out. And you can find me on social media at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find my work at Penalty Box Radio as well. That is going to do it for this 
our nerves are all the way up to here and we can't wait episode of the Locked On Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where we recap tonight's regular season kickoff. We'll see you then.